um, and let's do that. Okay, so um, now you should be seeing my slides. Is that correct or not? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so uh, for this afternoon, I will try to uh, introduce to, to the concept of grid refinement in Palabos. So first, um, I, I will try to, uh, to talk about uh, theoretical concepts and how they are done in Palabos uh, uh, in parallel. So I do, do not lose you too much because it's a really complicated topic. Um, so uh, really, it's important that you do not hesitate to interrupt me. Uh, because uh, the, we will go through a lot of things and uh, if you get lost then it might be too late <laughs> there, there will be a lot to uh, to catch up so really uh, please interrupt me uh, anytime you have any question okay so let's start um, first some uh, generalities I guess that's uh, the majority of you are familiar with these kind of things but anyway so um, why uh, do we uh, do we need grid refinement or a, a, a mesh that can uh, be adapted to our flow? Well, the, the reason it is quite obvious is that um, in, uh, in flows in general, we have uh, different length scales that are involved. And there are places where the flow varies uh, rapidly. Like for example, here on the right, right of the screen, there are places where it varies relatively slowly and there are places where nothing happens. Okay, so here is a, a picture from Wikipedia, uh, which is uh, a flame uh, burning and we are seeing uh, the, the flow above the flame. Okay? The flame okay? And so uh, what we uh, want to do is have uh, different uh, grid resolutions to account for the phenomena that are changing uh, more rapidly or more slowly with space and maybe in time. Okay, so um, to uh, to do that, we have uh, in uh, uh, traditional methods, uh, we do not really uh, need to make things too fancy, but in the lattice Boltzmann, we we need to make things that are a bit complicated. Okay, so what is the idea? Uh, we have different grid resolutions, okay, for slow varying or fast varying phenomena. And then we uh, have to decide what kind of strategy we want to apply. Okay, there are basically two strategies. One is uh, a multi-grid approach, okay, uh, where you have uh, your uh, computational mesh, which is on all grid levels, which is present uh, uh, at any time, okay. These have the advantage of being a bit simpler. Uh, the couplings you can do are a bit uh, uh, more straightforward to do, but they cost more, okay? You have to allocate memory for uh, each grid level everywhere. Uh, or at least the large, the coarsest grid levels must be allocated uh, uh, on more grid points than uh, uh, for the alternative uh, way of doing it, which is multi-domain, where you basically uh, only uh, cut slices uh, of your... Uh, so each grid level only has uh, the, the grid level that is required or the allocation of memory that is required for each level. Okay, so in Palabos, what we do, we do the multi-domain approach. Okay. Um, now, uh, for uh, one of the difficulties in the lattice Boltzmann method is that the grid is Cartesian, it is regular, uh, so it makes things uh, more complicated. Okay, so th this means that we cannot uh, have smooth transitions. Uh, the transition be be, uh, between a coarse okay, and a fine grid, uh, they are uh, really, uh, they create strong discontinuities. Okay, so if you say that on the on the uh, points here on where lines crosses you have a mesh point okay so this means that we have here three mesh points on the coarse grid and one two three four five six on the fine grid we see that we have a refinement uh, of a factor of two in terms of resolution of spatial resolution when we're going from the fine the coarse to the fine grid so this uh, uh, is a, a strong discontinuity 
And furthermore, to simplify things a bit further, we forbid that uh, the, the um, uh, grid transitions are not of a factor two between a coarse and a fine grid. Okay, so for instance, a uh, transition like this one is forbidden, okay, on the right. You cannot have grid points that uh, are not either exactly at uh, half the distance of a course of two course points, okay, or they are simply overlapping here, okay. So this kind of grid in Palabos and in general in the lattice Boltzmann literature, people do not do this, okay, because it adds uh, uh, extra layers of um, of complications, okay. So two quantities that are uh, important for us is that we want to have a coarse grid which will have a resolution or a special discretization delta x uh, c for coarse, delta t c for coarse too, so the temporal discretization, and the same for fine. Okay, So keep that in mind that the underscored c or f are for coarse and fine grids uh, in what follows. Okay, so um, now that we said that we want to uh, have uh, two uh, grids with uh, different resolutions. One uh, difficulty is to uh, say how quantities we will be rescaled between the grids. Okay, since they have different uh, spatial and temporal resolution, and that in the lattice Boltzmann method we are working in so-called lattice units, we need to make rescalings between the grids uh, to. Uh, to have continue, uh, some kind of continuity between the grids. Okay, so there are uh, several quantities that are of interest. They are not all listed, listed here, but we have pressure, density, velocity, strain rate. Okay, all the macroscopic quantities that are required uh, on the, the transitions. Okay, and we also have the population, so the FIs. Okay, so here are some macroscopic quantities okay in course or fine units and we have here the population and the uh, collision steps okay so on each one of the grid we have the uh, quantities in lattice units and we want to make sure that when we couple uh, grids we will have a continuity of the uh, real macroscopic quantities in the sense that they are, uh, are not in lattice units but in physical units okay and this must be continuous at the interface between grids okay so for example if we want to talk about velocity velocity has units of meters per second okay so if you have the velocity in coarse units you will have to rescale this velocity in coarse units with delta x coarse over delta t coarse to have the velocity in physical units okay that's the same for the the fine uh, velocity uh, the velocity in fine units, you have to rescale them with the appropriate uh, um, delta x and delta t. Okay, so this is true for any macroscopic quantity. Okay, and it's relatively straightforward to understand how to do that. Okay, I mean, to write this formula, it's relatively straightforward. You just uh, have to rescale the quantities with the correct uh, uh, units. Okay. Now, um, before I continue, is that clear that there is a discontinuity with the units uh, between uh, so discontinuity in lattice units between grids in general, or is it something that is not clear? Really, do not hesitate to interrupt me. Okay, let's say there is no question. Okay, so now. Uh, what we uh, we have is that we have two grids with two different uh, spatial and temporal resolution and that's up to us to choose uh, what are these resolutions okay this is not something that is uh, uh, imposed by anybody okay we are free to choose uh, one thing that uh, is usually done for grid refinement is to choose uh, the, um, the time resolution so delta t with respect to delta x. Yesterday you had uh, a class where uh, Francesco told, uh, talked us uh, a bit about that. Or was it Jonas? I don't remember. 
uh, where there were basically two different scalings that were uh, used. Okay, so you have the diffusing scaling where you scale delta t like delta x square. Here we will use the convective scaling, which we all also talked about yesterday, which says that the temporal uh, resolution is proportional to the spatial resolution. What does that mean is that when at a grid transition we say that, uh, oh, this is wrong, the, the factor 2 is on the wrong side. So if we say that delta x, I will correct it that immediately. So here is f and here is c. Okay, so if we say that at a transition we refine uh, the resolution by a factor of 2, then exactly the same will happen for the temporal resolution. Okay, so what does that mean? It means that when we are on a finer mesh, we have to do more time steps. Okay, so here it means that we will have to do twice the time steps on the fine grid than on a coarse grid. Okay. Now, how do we enforce the continuity of macroscopic quantities through the interface? Well, that's relatively easy. We wrote the formulas in the previous slide. So if we take again velocity, because it's the simplest, we have to rescale. Uh, so this is the velocity the macroscopic velocity. This is also the macroscopic velocity. Okay. And what do we do? We say, okay, delta xf is what? Is, oh, this is uh, wrong again. So, oh, no, it's okay, actually. So, you want delta xf to be delta xc over 2 and delta tf to be delta t over 2. Okay, so then the 2 simplifies and what we get is that basically uh, the continuity is automatic. So in lattice units with the convective scaling, the velocity on the fine mesh and the velocity on the coarse mesh will be the same in lattice units also. Okay, so you don't have to rescale the velocity. Okay, is that clear? Yes, no. Let's say yes. Yes, yes. yes. Okay, perfect. Um, so now what happens? So this is okay because basically what we do is that we rescale uh, uh, delta x like delta t. Okay, so now what happens uh, when we are dealing with quantities that have not the same scaling uh, in uh, uh, space and time? Okay, so let's let's take the, the strain rate. Okay, so the units of the strain rate is uh, one over time. Okay, so what does that mean? It means basically that uh, when we take uh, the the macroscopic, so the, the the strain rate in physical units, you have to rescale it by 1 over delta Tf, okay? And this must be the same, because that's how we want it, with uh, the strain rate in uh, uh, physical units, but computed from coarse units, okay? And what do we see here? We see that uh, when we rescale delta Tf, like uh, delta T over 2, okay? We end up with this formula here, and basically what it says is that uh, the strain rate in, in uh, fine units is half the strain rates in coarse units. Okay, so when you compute the strain rate at the interface, if you want to communicate things between grids, it means that when you compute the strain rate in uh, coarse units, you have to divide it by two to communicate it to the fine grid and vice versa, okay? You, when you compute the strain rate in fine units, you have to multiply it by a factor of two to communicate it to the grid with the coarse units. Okay, does that make sense? Yes, no? Let's say yes. Okay, so this is for macroscopic quantities. It is relatively uh, straightforward to, uh, to do that. It becomes a bit more complicated when we are dealing with uh, the populations. Okay, so uh, the populations uh, in the lattice Boltzmann method, you are all experts, uh, are usually uh, divided in two parts. Okay, you have the equilibrium part, okay, which is this one, and you also have the non equilibrium part, which is this one. Okay. Um, the equilibrium, okay, you, you know the formula, only depends on the density and on the velocity plus some uh, uh, lattice parameters. And these, we know that they do not need any rescale uh, when we are transitioning from uh, one level to the other. So that means that the equilibrium population does not need any rescale when uh, we are on a transition from a firing to coarse or coarse to fine lattice. 
but it uh, appears that this is not the case for the f non-equilibrium okay so if you define f non-equilibrium like fi minus f equilibrium then when you are transitioning uh, from coarse to fine f non-equilibrium then you have to rescale these quantities by some factor we are going to see what this factor is okay so uh, if you uh, remember your chakman enskog expansion basically f non-equilibrium is the is proportional to the strain rate so you see that there should be some rescale okay because there is no easy factor to uh, to translate from one grid to the other okay okay so how do we do this rescaling now so this is a bit uh, uh, more uh, a theory about all the uh, uh, lattice boltzmann discretization but we'll uh, go through it quite quickly okay so we start with the uh, Boltzmann equation, the continuous one, with a BGK approximation. We have here F the velocity distribution function, tau the relaxation time, F uh, and F0 uh, the uh, equilibrium uh, distribution. We do the gauss hermit discretization, and basically we end up with a discrete velocity uh, Boltzmann equation. Okay? Nothing too fancy here. Now, uh, we integrate this equation along characteristics and we end up with the uh, after some uh, so this is the trapezoidal integration uh, with respect to time along characteristics and what you get is this uh, implicit equation you make this uh, very uh, need very much needed uh, change of variables and you end up with a standard uh, uh, lattice Boltzmann BGK scheme okay what is important here is oops is this here okay we did this this rescaling okay because if you look at this F here these should not require any rescaling if we were directly simulating uh, the F's okay because they are macroscope some kind of macro physical quantities that have not anything to do with a spatial or temporal resolution for the moment. Once we do that, and the devil hides in these delta t's, that we will put to 1 to go to lattice units, we will need to do some rescaling. Okay? So how does it go? What we want to, to, uh, to do, I remind you here, is to determine by which factor the F non-equilibrium must be rescaled. Okay, so first we will compute uh, the F non-equilibrium. So uh, that's this one, okay. And this is what is just uh, the F i bar where, where to which we uh, remove the F equilibrium. Okay, so if we remove F non-equilibrium, uh, F equilibrium from from these uh, two sides of the equation, what we end up with is this th this equation here. Okay. What we know is that Fi non-equilibrium must say the same whatever grid level we are on. Okay, So we can say that this Fi non-equilibrium uh, expressed in coarse units, that's the left hand side here, left hand side here or in fine units, units must stay the same. They must be continuous across grid levels. Okay, So what does that mean? That means that we have this equation here okay and each one of these uh, of these left and right uh, factors here these can be expressed with the tau bar from the previous slide okay and if you just replace the formulas from the previous slide in that uh, in these two equations what you end up is with these two things okay so you have delta t course over tau course times f neck in course units which is equal to delta T F over uh, the relaxation time in fine units times F I equilibrium in fine units. Okay, you isolate everything you need to isolate. You end up with the, the alpha that we got from the uh, previous slides, which is equal to this. So this is the rescaling factor for the F non-equilibrium across grid. Okay, so this is the complex part of the how we should rescale things 
to have a smooth transition between uh, grid levels, okay, when we are talking with lattice units. Is that clear? Any questions? Or did I lose you all? Uh, I think I lost you all. It, it sounds clear. It seems fine. Okay, perfect. Okay, so now, uh, just to, uh, to see how we do that in, in Palabos. Okay, so in Palabos, we uh, must, so as we uh, saw earlier for grid refinement, we must communicate things from one grid to another. Okay, so on, uh, when we, uh, you are on each side of the, of the refinement, let's say that um, we have here a fine and a coarse grid. Let me try to draw something. Okay, basically on uh, this side, you will have everything in course units and you want to communicate uh, from the course uh, lattice to your fine lattice. Okay, you want to communicate density, velocity and F non-equilibrium because these nodes here uh, from, the, from the fine point of view, they have some missing information, okay? Here, you want to know what would be uh, the density, the velocity, and F non-equilibrium to be able to uh, recompute this Fi in fine units, okay? You don't have any information coming from the left here. Okay, so what should we do? We basically compute the macroscopic quantities. We can then compute F non-equilibrium in coarse units. We apply the rescaling, okay, that we just uh, derived. And then we reconstruct all the FIs uh, on, uh, on those grid points, okay? So this works perfectly as long as we are on coincident uh, grid points, okay? Let's say that for the moment that we only care about those ones. Okay, so we have a decompose operation on the uh, coarse grid, a rescaling to go from fine to coarse units, and then we recompose the populations in fine units. I'm sorry, may I ask you just a question? Yeah, we can have just one in, uh, intermediate point between uh, the, the two different grid. So a, a priori you could have more, okay? But it will make things much more complicated. And already a factor of two is a huge discontinuity. Right. Okay, so I, I haven't really experienced with more than uh, one point exactly in the middle. But my uh, feeling is that it will make things very complicated, so uh, too discontinuous for the scheme to handle properly. So, okay. what did you pass? so what did you pass at least just if you need three kind of meshes, you just oh, go... You, uh, you, you have to have an intermediate... Uh, uh, yeah, that's what I was yeah. trying to suggest, okay. Yeah, so if you, if you want to have a factor of four, say of refinement, you will need a factor of two in between. You could add more, but in my opinion, it would be too sharp to handle for the scheme. Okay. Okay. It's one more. Uh, sorry, I'm not hearing you well. Uh, is that me or is it? Uh, same, same for me as well. Okay. Okay, let, let's continue. If you uh, have a question, do not hesitate to scream and at some point we'll hear you. Okay. So now we saw okay. how... Yes? No. Okay, so um, now that we uh, know how to rescale things on coincident grid points uh, uh, from coarse to fine, we can do exactly the same from fine to coarse. That's the shame of copy-paste. Okay. That's exactly the same, okay? So we compute, uh, if you want to go from in, in the other direction, let's say we have here exactly the same grid as before. One, two, three, one, two, three, okay? Now we want to communicate things, uh, oh, sorry. We want to communicate things uh, on these uh, blue dots Okay, from fine to coarse. That's exactly the same here. We do not know uh, what are the coarse populations on these points. Okay, so we do exactly the same 
and it's even, even simpler than before, to go from the fine to coarse. On these coincident points, which always exist, we uh, decompose our uh, populations into density, velocity, and F non-equilibrium parts. We rescale them and we recompose them in uh, coarse units. Okay? That's exactly the same, but in the, uh, the other way around. Okay, so in Palabos, uh, to uh, handle this abstraction, we have a class that's named Rescaler. Okay, it, it contains a bunch of stuff, not uh, all are present here, but basically what you need to do this decompose uh, and rescale, you need to decompose the population, so to compute rho, u, and f non-equilibrium. You need uh, to uh, handle this alpha, okay, so this rescaling factor which is uh, a function of the resolution and of the relaxation time in, on each level. And that's it, basically. Okay, you de decompose and rescale, and this will give you uh, the, the correct uh, uh, populations to do your coupling at the interface. Okay. So if you want to look at how it looks like in Palabos, the rescale function, which is the one that uh, one should implement if he's doing uh, fancy stuff, okay? Basically, what you do, first you rescale your relaxation frequency with respect to your delta, delta t, okay? So basically, this is a factor two or one half, depending on which direction you go. And then uh, you just rescale so we have this uh, this vector here which contains in his first component the density the components one to three the velocity in 3d and uh, force the from the fourth to the qth uh, minus one uh, component it contains the f non-equilibrium part okay so the only thing we need to do is to uh, rescale this uh, non-equilibrium part with his uh, prefactor this is exactly the alpha uh, we're talking about and we're done okay so this is the uh, important function to decompose and rescale data to communicate between between grids in Palos. okay any question okay let's continue so i ask again because i have a slide that says so questions on the rescaling yes no on the theory, on the theory or the implementation part. Um, why do you have? What, what do you mean by discontinuity, and what's the effect on the simulation? So, sorry, text. What Thanks. do you mean by discontinuity? In the sense that, um, I mean, like you're scaling the quantities in the correct way, right? Yeah. So whatever you have on one grid, then you end up having the, the correct quantity on the other one. So I guess that the the, the only thing that that's coming to my mind is that there are some nodes which are not present on the other grid, and then at some point you will have to do some kind of interpolation to yeah, so, so create I'm... the information there. But is that the stuff that's creating the problems? No, so, so for the moment we're not talking at all about interpolation. Usually in the lattice Boltzmann method, you are only working in lattice units. Okay, in lattice units, if you are on the coarse grid or on the fine grid, you can represent, say, a velocity of one meters per second, but it will not, uh, so the, in general, it will not be the same uh, velocity in the coarse grid or on the fine grid. The number you get is not the same. To obtain the velocity of one meter per second, you have to rescale it appropriately. Okay? Okay. And all the things we talked about just now is about that. How should we rescale the uh, quantities in lattice units to uh, have a continuity, okay? To have the same units, so the, the same quantity expressed with the appropriate units between grids, okay? Okay, so then you are, um, you have, you are a, on a common ground. You know how to translate your exactly. from one part to the other. That's, a, that's it, then exactly the idea. My question was, what, is there something else that's creating... I, I'm problem? coming. I, I guess I'm coming to that in the in the in what comes uh, in the in the okay. rest of the presentation. Okay. So we'll talk about interpolations and stuff. Uh, yeah, but the question is: it mainly about interpolation? 
because I think that if you are using, uh, like, let's say, two different grid meshes, you are not solving exactly the same Boltzmann equation. Uh, well, because ta t the value of tau is changing. Yeah, so it's not exactly the same, but it, we, we'll come to that. So, okay, I, okay. I, as I mentioned, there, there are maybe, that, that's correct, we have two taus, right? We have a tau, it's, uh, for example, uh, yeah, here we, we have it noted. We have two different taus. Okay, on the coarse one you have a tau c, and on the fine one you have a tau f. Okay, so these taus are, are different. Okay. <clears throat> okay, but but still, what we want is simulate the same physics in the coarse and the fine, or at least almost the same physics. We'll come to to that a bit later. Okay. So now, uh, how do we really couple things between? Uh, so we, uh, as uh, as mentioned before. Uh, we are now talking uh, the the same language between grids. Okay, we know how to speak from one grid to the other. Okay, the quantities are the same. But now, how uh, do we really couple the grids? Okay, um, so when we are on a coarse uh, lattice node and on a fine lattice node, we have uh, two different resolutions. Okay, so on the coarse we have the the circle skiers and on the fine you have the the crosses, and uh, we have to decide how we do the coupling. So in Palabos, uh, what we do is that we have an overlap region. There are schemes where there is no overlap region. Here we have one. Okay. And what should we do? What we should do is uh, basically use this uh, overlap region to make the two uh, grid stock. Okay. So we will talk to the uh, coarse unit from the fine unit. In, on this uh, overlapping node here, and from the coarse to the fine on this one. Okay, and uh, we will complete the information a bit differently when we go from the coarse to the uh, grid to the fine grid, and from the fine to the coarse. We'll come to that in just a few minutes. Maybe before uh, going into more details on how this over, uh, how we do this coupling, maybe a few words about how the coupling is done in Palabos because it it adds a layer of complexity okay so to do the couplings to simplify things we have let's say a 2d refinement here we have this multi-block structure that uh, jonas told you about in great extents in different classes and we have so in fine units these blocks uh, in coarse units these three or four blocks and we have here a fine units blocks okay so to simplify things what we do is that we always have on uh, interface blocks, okay? So we want to communicate from coarse to fine. We always have uh, an underlying coarse block, okay? So if we want to see a larger picture, we have here uh, uh, the, the domain in uh, coarse units, and then we have a few refinement levels uh, as we go towards the center where we have a cylinder-like body here. Actually, it's a is a cut from a 3D simulation with a sphere. That's what you'll do uh, uh, later in the hands-on session. Okay, so on this uh, particular mesh, what you'll end up with is a coarse grid which extends up to uh, uh, this, uh, this um, uh, grid 2, okay, so you will have all these blocks that are allocated and all the coincident overlap blocks are also uh, allocated for the coarse lattice, okay? The only part that will not be allocated from the coarse point of view is everything that's in the middle here, okay? And we continue like this for all the uh, subsequent uh, refinement levels, okay? Then we have also to add this uh, coupling layer between multi-block lattices, okay, we're doing a lattice Boltzmann scheme on coarse and on fine levels. And to do the coupling, we add uh, a, a few extra fields with our N tensor fields, we, which are basically tensor fields with a length that is not uh, known at compilation time, okay, which contain the density, the velocity, and the F equilibrium uh, by default, okay. This uh, simplifies uh, what is uh, simplifies, I don't know. This adds a limited uh, complexity to the algorithm in Palamos. Okay, so it's really a, a nightmare to do, so we try to go for the simplest possible solution here. It may not be fully optimal, but uh, that's life. <laughs> okay, so 
Um, basically, what you have when you do that, you have a complex multi-block structure at each grid level. Okay, so you basically allocate a multi-block structure that might be full of holes at each level. Okay, and you have at each level a lattice and a few fields that are used uh, uh, in these overlap regions that are used uh, to communicate data between the different levels. Okay. So now what is the details of this of this coupling? Okay, so we have, uh, as mentioned before, uh, the couplings that are done to go from one grid level to the other to talk the same language. So we have this uh, decomposed and rescale functional that is handled by uh, processing functional, as its name suge suggests, which basically does a decomposition and rescale. And we have a rescale, recompose functional, which just takes these decomposed values and rescale and uh, transforms them back into uh, the lattice. Okay, so we go from lattice to tensor fields and from tensor field to lattice. Okay, so it's in two steps all the time. Okay, and all the coupling is handled by proce processing functionals, with which you had a, a class on by Jonas this morning. So let's try now to go into maybe the details of, of how we go from one level to the other. Okay, so let's take a 2D example because in 3D it's impossible to draw. Uh, what you have here is a coarse grid on the left and a fine grid on the right, and you have this here overlap region. Okay, so what you want to do is couple from coarse to fine on this region and couple from fine to coarse on this one. Okay. You want the first node in fine units to be coupled to the uh, almost last node in, in coarse units and vice versa. Okay, so how will you do that? On the uh, So if we go from coarse to fine, it's quite clear that basically we have nothing to do on these uh, grid points here, but what about those ones? Okay. So we have some missing information, which are which is the thing with the decompose and rescale, and which is that at some points we do not even have coincident grid nodes. To do to recover these values here, we are going to do some kind of interpolation, which will be, will be spatial. This is quite straightforward to see. We need to do spatial interpolation, but we will also need to do temporal interpolation. Okay, because you have to remember that for each course iteration, you have to do two fine in, uh, iterations. Okay, because we scale delta x like delta t. Okay, so when we refine by a factor of two in space, we have to refine by a factor of two in time two. Okay, so we will need to go from uh, t to t plus one in coarse units by going from t to t plus one half and from t to one half to t plus one in fine units. Okay, so let's have a look at how this looks. Okay, so if we draw uh, a sketch of what should happen on each uh, iteration in fine units. So we are at time t, everything is fine. We do one iteration in course. This makes us jump from here to here. So this will be a course jump. And we have to do two jumps in fine units. Okay, so fine and fine. When you, we do the first iteration in uh, fine units, these uh, lattice nodes here, we don't know they, they contain garbage values, okay? Things that come from outside the domain. <coughs> so we have to uh, uh, recompose the missing information, okay? And then when we go from, uh, for, for all of them, and then we go, for, we go from uh, t, plus, uh, t plus one half to t plus one, we have some information again, but still there are all the intermediate points that are missing. So to, uh, what we, we will do is that we will perform a, a spatial interpolation for all those points here at each level. So at uh, time t and i time t plus one, here all the values on the course grid are known well defined. Okay, so we can make a temporal interpolation to get, uh, let's uh, draw them in, I don't know, uh, green. So we will do a temporal interpolation to get these grid, green, grid points here are according to this formula here. Okay. And we will do a spatial interpolation, uh, as we'll see later, to get the points that are in between. Okay. So for the moment, let's say that we are just interested in the coincident one. 
we just perform one course iteration time step we perform a time interpolation and then we can handle all these uh, <coughs> all these uh, coincident green points okay is that clear you understand the but this means that you always have to evolve first the chords yeah read and then the fine green exactly okay. So we go from chorus to fine, and then we do some uh, complex coupling. I will try to draw something or uh, write something which uh, shows you the complexity of doing a colliding stream step. Okay. Okay. So now, what about spatial interpolation? Uh, we had a bit of trouble with this one because basically, for all the in these intermediate points here, uh, uh, this one and these ones what should we do okay so the easiest is to say okay we can do an, a linear interpolation and we get the point in the middle this is an order two approximation it should be fine okay actually it's not what we should do to have a good accuracy is to perform a cubic interpolation so here so it means order four okay so it's cubic because <coughs> it's cubic but order four because we are just in the middle here <coughs> So what we need, sorry, I will drink a co some coffee to, uh, to stop coughing. Do not hesitate to ask questions while I, uh, I drink some coffee. But basically... So, uh, Orestes, yeah. in the chat, there was a discussion about uh, cell-centered versus um, uh, vertex-centered. So can you maybe just make a yeah. comment about which are you are doing and what's the difference? Yeah, I'm sorry, I, I cannot see the chat. Um, yeah, no problem. Uh, so yeah. the the difference. So here we are doing. Uh, s, uh, s, um, uh, it's not a face center. So it's a s, um, how do you call it? A self-centered approach. So the the no 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 no. no, no it's node. Uh, it's no, uh, so node. Sorry, it's a no, node uh, based approach. So on each node you have to uh, compute the value exactly. So it's not a volumetric approach, okay? <coughs> so um, here, what we uh, we want to do is to do this interpolation for the missing information here in the middle, okay? Uh, so we have two choices, either linear, okay, or cubic. We go for cubic because it works better, as I'll show you. Okay, so to decide which one was better, we did a very uh, stupid uh, benchmark. And basically you are you have a coarse grid, a fine grid, and you do a Poisson flow in the middle. Okay, so you go from left to right and you have uh, a Poisson flow that is imposed. You have boundary conditions everywhere here. And what you expect, so if you look at the, the velocity field, everything goes fine. Uh, even at the transition with linear interpolation, what happens when you go for, uh, uh, when you look at the pressure field, you, you start to see strange things. Okay, so here what we look at is the pressure drop uh, along the center line of the, of the channel, which you expect to be more or less linear. Okay. What we see if we go for linear interpolation is that there is a uh, a strange drop in pressure in the middle of the channel. So it's some uh, sharp discontinuity which is uh, felt when you go to uh, uh, tau, so the relaxation time that goes to uh, one half, which means basically going to zero viscosity or, or high Reynolds number, okay? So we lose a lot of accuracy. It's, the scheme is not any more second order accurate in velocity, it's just first order, okay? So this is one uh, experiment we did, and that explains why we are using second or uh, cubic interpolation instead of linear interpolation. <coughs> Do you have any questions? Or did you yes, yes, I have a question regarding the interpolation. Mm -hmm. It's a 1D interpolation, correct? Mm -hmm. So in two, in two dimensions, it's 1D. In three dimensions, it's 2D. Okay, okay so, so it introduces, so then it should introduce a bias in terms of isotropy, no? Um, 
Uh, probably, yeah. The, I mean, the, okay. you have no, actually, since you, ha, you are on the same uh, planes, there is mm -hmm. no way to have cubic or in, in 2D, 2D interpolations. It always uh, end up being a 1D interpolation. So, yeah. Yeah, but I don't know. Maybe, okay. Because we, we could think about something like inverse weighted uh, distance uh, interpolation or something like so, this. So, yeah, but uh, if you are isotropic, in all directions, it all cancels out. What we could think is to ah. have a cell-centered approach, mm -hmm. and then we could do uh, 2D or 3D interpolations. Okay, Because we'll you. not be on the same plane or uh, line anymore. Okay. Okay. <coughs> Any other question? Okay. okay, so how are all these awful concepts handled in Palabos? Basically, we have uh, a huge lot of uh, processing functionals. Okay, there are processing functionals for spatial interpolation and for linear interpolation, uh, for temporal interpolation. Sorry. So the the spatial interpolation is a nightmare, especially in, so in in two D you can imagine that you have basically corners. Okay. Oops. Oh, this green here. Okay. So if you have say course here fine here all these points here will be okay with uh, standard two points in each direction the problem comes from the corners okay what do you do with these ones okay so they must be treated a bit differently than than the, the straight lines and this becomes even worse in 3d because then you have to do edge you have edges and corners Okay, so you have these three different uh, processing functionals just to do the, um, the interpolation on the surfaces of your grid refinements. And then this one is relatively straightforward. You have a time interpo linear interpolation that requires to store information about two time steps. Okay. So this uh, is to go from uh, coarse to fine coupling. What we want to discuss now is how we go from uh, fine to coarse. This is a priori much easier, okay? Because when you want to go uh, from a fine node to a coarse one, you always have uh, a coincident node, okay? From the fine node, fine grid to the coarse grid, okay? So nothing can go wrong, right? Well, actually it can. Why? Because when you are solving uh, your uh, LB equation or fluid flow equation on the fine grid, you are resolving much more scales that you are when you are on the coarse grid. Okay, so you can imagine you have uh, very uh, tiny vortices. Okay, on the fi fine grid and on the large one, you can resolve only large, larger vertices. Okay, and what should you do to uh, account or to uh, avoid having the small uh, uh, vortices add spurious energy, I would say, to the coarse grid, okay? These are present on the fine grid, but you cannot resolve them on the coarse grid, and you have to kill them somehow, okay? That's the, the idea. And how we do that is that we uh, filter. Filter is a fancy word for averaging in our case, okay? So the only thing we do is we take one uh, coarse grid point here, and we average the uh, the population, the non-equilibrium part actually, over all neighbors. Okay, and then once this is done, we can uh, complete, so just copy this result into the coarse grid. Okay, and we do not need to do anything fancier now because we are, have all we need. But it could cause a missing of information when we do that, or no, there, th there is no, because you see, when you do a first, co so this, uh, so when we already handled all the information that could be missing here with this partial interpolation and temporal interpolation I just talked about, okay? So you do a collide, you do two collides in stream, basically on the fine grid, and you're in a situation where you know all these uh, crosses are mesh points where you have all the information you need, okay? And then you need to get the, the information from the neighbors, okay? <coughs> and these nodes are complete, okay? 
you have no missing information whatsoever. The only maybe missing information is on these nodes here that you do not need right now, okay? Because you do you did two collides in stream. On the first on the the first you completed here what needed to be completed, and then you do a second collide in stream, and this will stream things from left, right, top, bottom, whatever. Okay, and on these nodes, you will always have all the information. So you don't need to uh, make some completion. Okay, then since you have all this information on the fine grid, you do this averaging of the F non equilibrium, you transform that to uh, a coarse units, whatever, and you recompose your population on the coincident uh, mesh points. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, yeah thank you. Perfect. Um, I don't understand why we should average on all the neighbors because if we represent a bigger volume than the coarse cell. That's, uh, I, you're right. It's just for simplicity, we thought it, and it seems to work fine. We tested a bunch of things doing uh, weighted averages, uh, more uh, smooth things. It, it looks to work just fine like this. Okay. It, it, the, uh, the answer is an engineering one. It just works. Uh, can, can, couldn't you just copy the information you have on the... You, you could do that, but then you have instabilities. I will talk about it in, uh, in, oh, okay. in one or two slides. I don't remember. Okay. Okay, so how does that work in Palabos? Well, we all again have a, a filtering functional where we basically have... Uh, things that are in fine units in this F tensor here, and things that are in coarse units here, they have been properly rescaled already. So the thing is that we first not copy, uh, not filter velocity and density. So this is what these lines mean. And then what we do is that here we filter. So this is uh, the filtering part. Uh, uh, we filter basically oops, the bottom here, the FI non equilibrium. Okay, so we loop over all neighbors and we just add them and average in the end. Okay, so this is the uh, main part of the uh, processing functional about filtering. Okay, uh, any questions? No further questions. Okay, so now how does that look from a uh, 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 higher point of view when we are doing these colliding streams operations. So here we only consider two grids, okay? A coarse one, which is this column here. So this is coarse, and this is the fine, okay? So we make one colliding stream to go from uh, time t to time t plus one, and here we do two collision and streaming uh, operations to go from time t to t plus one again, okay? So here at the end, we want to be uh, at the beginning of a new time step in course units, okay? So we do these uh, colliding stream in course units, and what we first need to do is do a time interpolation between on the, on the interface between the populations at time t and time t plus one, okay? And we also do at the same time a space space interpolation uh, for the these interpolated values. Okay, so we will have everything we need to complete the populations in the fine units. Once the fine unit the grid in the fine units is uh, appropriately uh, completed, we can redo a second colliding stream where we'll complete again. Uh, by doing just a spatial interpolation of the coarse grid at time t plus one, okay? We complete the populations in the fine grid and then we need to complete the populations for the coarse grid from the finer, okay? So we do this filtering operation I just talked about and we complete the coarse grid and we are done with this iteration, okay? One time steps with two grids is basically three collides in streams, one in coarse units, two in fine units, and then there are a bunch of interpolation and filtering operations that are performed uh, to complete basically the two grids. Okay, so this is... Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, 
And there is a typo in, in this slide because CS should be FS, no? No, it's, it's, it's collide and stream. Okay, okay. CS is for collide Sorry. and stream. So this is collide. So this is the collide and stream. Okay, so th this is the uh, terminology in uh, in the uh, in Palabos, okay, for a collision. Basically, okay. okay. Both are, are done at the same time. I got it. <coughs> Thank you. Okay, so this is the big picture of the algorithm. Actually, what it looks like is more awful, really, way more awful. Why? Because usually you have more than just two levels. Okay, so you have to have an algorithm that automatically adapts to uh, to show this okay so what we ended up with is a recursive algorithm that does all the collision and streaming in the correct order okay so basically you have on your level so if you're on course level you do a collide and stream okay and then you have to do all the decomposition time interpolation spatial interpolation whatever you need okay before being able to recompose uh, from to the to the coarser level okay so you have first the colliding stream here and then as you go higher in the in the levels you do interpolation and a new colliding stream okay so you recall this uh, this function here which again does a new colliding stream these uh, decomposition and time interpolations and so on and so on and so on and then once you have finished with your final level you can start unroll the the recursion okay you can uh, recompose your populations on the fine grid and execute their uh, data processors these could be uh, boundary conditions this could be uh, redu reductive uh, function couplings whatever okay you can execute them now okay and then you have to do the second colliding stream okay which again uh, is a recursive operation. You do again the spatial interpolation, recompose the processing functionals, and then one, once you are finished with that, you can uh, uh, start copying information to the coarser levels. Okay, so you can start propagating the information from the fine to the coarse level. Okay, so this uh, I'm not expecting you to uh, to directly understand these lines. It's just to show you that it's uh, a complex operation to do a colliding stream with multi levels, okay, multiple levels. Why is that important? Because when you want, for example, to apply uh, processing functionals, this becomes uh, a more complex operation than it is on single grid. Okay, you have to apply them at the correct time, and this is done uh, manually in some sense. Okay, so you have to execute the data processors manually at some point. So th this is why these lines are here. Okay. Okay, do you have any questions before we continue? Does this cause load ba balancing problems or something similar? Uh, okay, so uh, load balancing, it's a bit like for the for, for the th this morning session, but there is some kind of load balancing. What we are trying to do, uh, maybe I have a slide, slide on it uh, later, is that uh, uh, we try to um, put as many lo the load as equivalently as possible between all the processors in fine units. And this has constraints on how the load is uh, distributed for the, the coarser levels. Okay, because you have these uh, interface blocks which must be on the same processor as the fine interface box. Okay, so you have a, a bunch of constraints and we try to have as many blocks at each level on each processor, satisfying the constraint of the, um, of the interface blocks. That's how it's constructed. And then we try to be as equivalent of, as possible. Of course, when you have very complex grids, this uh, can become a very complex problem. Okay, thanks. Okay, okay so uh, maybe uh, what I can do now is maybe show a, a small application. So the application is the, uh, the dipole. Okay, so you have a uh, two uh, counter rotating monopoles which are going to uh, hit a wall. Okay, so it starts from here. Here we see the velocity. 
it's self-propelled, it reaches the wall, it hits the walls and does fun fancy f funny things. Uh, let me maybe uh, show you a video of this. Are you seeing the video? You should. Uh, yes. Yes, perfect. Okay, so here what you see is the vorticity uh, field and uh, we just initialize the simulation like this and it goes, it hits a wall and does nice uh, sub vorticity. Okay. <clears throat> so this is a, a nice benchmark for us because the boundary conditions are simple. We can uh, have a vortex, let's try it, vortices crossing maybe sharp interfaces. Okay, so you want typically to have more uh, grid points at the positions where the vortices hit the wall. Okay, so we can, and uh, this benchmark has been performed with uh, higher order methods, which we, are, we can compare to. Okay. Okay, so basically what we measure here is the entropy and we see that if everything goes according to plan. So do we get the same results as higher order methods? So we did the benchmark and we got a nice uh, agreement. What is important here is uh, the difference between these two uh, pictures here. So here uh, we did the simulation without the filtering. Okay, and you see that you have spurious stuff appearing uh, at the refinement level here. Okay, so if you do not do this filtering, you will start creating spur spurious things that, uh, that are due to the fact that you are not resolving uh, the fine structure on the coarse grid, but still you are trying to transfer the information. Okay, when you do the filtering, everything is smooth at the interface. Okay. So it's not just uh, uh, to uh, please our uh, our mind that we do the filtering, it has also practical issues. Here, uh, the simulation uh, in later time steps become, because becomes unstable. Okay, okay. Uh, I hope I will not be too, too late. Too late. Uh, so, uh, this morning you discussed with uh, with Jonas the concepts of uh, processing functionals and multi-scalar and tensor fields. Okay, we have exactly as we have to do for the multi-block structure that uh, becomes a multi-level structure in the grid refinement. We try to have more or less the same uh, interface. Okay. We have to do the same with uh, multi-scalar multi and tensor field. Okay, so what we do is that we take the structure we have, uh, the memory structure, if you want, of a multi-level uh, structure in 3D, so these grid refinement structures, and we just use this structure to create a multi-level scalar and tensor fields. Okay, so these will be uh, complex uh, multi-block structures that do not need any coupling anymore between themselves okay but still to uh, perform computation you should uh, compute fill them appropriately okay then when you want to uh, perform some some uh, camp coupling or output a result okay you want to compute say the velocity on all your grid points you must store them somewhere this is where the uh, multi-level tensor field for example uh, will come into play and exactly as for uh, multi-scalar tensor fields, you can integrate them uh, with the same uh, syntax or almost the same syntax as for uh, single level simulations. Okay, you can do integrate processing functional on a multi-level uh, structure or on a multi-block structure. And the same for uh, reductive processing functions. Okay, so this is handled for you. The difficulty here is that you must provide the level you want to integrate your uh, your uh, scalar or tensor field. You, you must say, okay, I want them to be uh, integrated at level at on the grid level three. Okay, you so you have ten uh, grid levels. You may not want to integrate it on the finer level because you're not really interested in that uh, in that much information. You just want something that is coarser. Okay. How is that? Uh, does that work then? Is that it will just compute uh, the values on coarser uh, on the coarser levels? Okay. 
So this is a, an extra uh, thing you need to uh, take care of when you are working with uh, with multi levels and uh, processing functionalities is that you have to specify um, at which level you want to integrate or apply them. And there is also, uh, as we saw from previous slide, you have to, uh, if you want to integrate them, you need to, to uh, use these negative uh, levels. You have to execute the processing functions by hand, so to say, okay? It's a bit complicated, but I just mention it uh, for completeness. I don't expect you to remember uh, all these details. Okay, so now that we uh, covered basically how we implemented the uh, grid refinement in Palabos, we uh, can talk about how we are generating uh, the grid. Okay, so this is an awfully complex topic. Uh, we do not have uh, a very, very advanced solution in Palabos. It's a, a simple but working uh, uh, strategy. The idea is that what we want is to uh, give our simulator uh, grid density scalar field and from this density scalar field which has ba basically uh, zeros and ones so a scalar between zero and one and when uh, you are close to one you want more points and when you are close to zero that's the idea okay and when you uh, create this uh, this scalar field you basically uh, uh, to simplify put more uh, ones close to an obstacle or places you will have uh, fast varying uh, uh, stuff uh, happening and you will put zeros where you are far away from the obstacle okay if you talk about exterior flows then once you have this uh, this uh, grid structure okay so I don't know let, let, maybe let me just draw something ugly here or maybe even I can show you uh, a para view example. Are you seeing my para view window? Yes. Yes. Okay, perfect. Okay, so I have generated here a very simple uh, grid density. Okay, so these are just uh, uh, parallel epipeds with uh, values of grid density that are going from 0 to 1. Okay, and uh, let's say I want to simulate the flow past a sphere. Let's add the sphere here so you see where it is. This is completely random, okay? I just put boxes in it to, to show you how this works. Basically, you will have more grid points in the region where the, the value of the grid density is one and less in the one where it's zero, okay? Still, you have to uh, make sure that you, are, you have only a factor two of refinement between each uh, block so it becomes a mess, a mess when you generate the actual grid. So, um, how uh, then how do you actually generate the grid from this grid density? What you do is that you well, that we are using an oak tree grid structure. So what we do is that we first take a cube or a square in 2D, okay, and then we have uh, I don't know some uh, some thing where we want more points, and we check. Uh, we'll try to make it a bit like this, okay. And we check, okay, is there a point where the grid density is higher than some threshold? Okay, let's divide. We divide in four, okay. And then we continue uh, to, to go uh, down the tree. Is there anything here we can do? Is, is it higher? No, it's not. Okay, we don't do anything here, but here we should continue dividing, okay. And it goes like this basically until we reach the maximum number of refinement we want okay and then we have to make sure that the uh, factor of two so we do a forward pass and then we do a backward pass which checks for the maximum uh, so there is criterion when you cannot have more than a factor two refinement between uh, in an interface okay Sorry, Jonas, there is any limits about the levels that we can build of the, the memory of your computer? <laughs> uh, it's just related to the hardware. It's, it's yeah. not really the method. This was the yeah, question. Yeah, it, it generalizes to any an arbitrary number. Uh, the problem is your, that we don't have an arbitrary number of resources. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, so I I think Orestes, can you confirm if I remember right that in practice we can rarely do more than ten levels. This yeah, exactly. Be, uh... So usually on very large parallel computers you can do ten levels, and then you die from resources, <laughs> so starvation. I have a question. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, for the different levels of grid, we will have different values of relaxation time, right? Yeah. And and we all know that the value of tau should be in particular range for the stability and accuracy. Yeah. So theoretically speaking, you cannot, your level of refinement will be always restricted by the choice of tau and yeah. physics of the problem, right? Yeah, it, it can be, although with uh, not BGK models, uh, you will have an incredible talk about this on Friday evening, uh, afternoon uh, by Christophe. You can go to relaxation times that are very, very close to two. So uh, it's not really a problem. Okay. The, the real problem is rather uh, the, uh, the, yeah, the hardware, hardware uh, part. You can add the levels, you usually have no stability issues. Of course, if you only use BGK, you will have stability issues. With more advanced models, you will not. Okay, thank you. You're welcome. Any other question? Okay, so this ends basically uh, the theoretical part. I will now just uh, say a few words about the exercises. So there are uh, three different exercises uh, uh, in the on the drive. Okay, so uh, normally, uh, let's see, can I show you that? Oh, um, what number is it? It's the terminal. It's uh, four. Do you see my terminal? or you do not see anything yes yes, yes. perfect okay so basically we are in the session of the thursday afternoon and you have a bunch of uh, directories there okay so there are three uh, different exercises let me try to uh, how can i increase it uh, well it's not the terminal that i'm accustomed to but basically you have generate grid density from boxes and generate grid density from spheres these are two exercises about the uh, generation of the grid density we just talked about Okay, so in the first exercise with the boxes, you just play with the config file and you see how you can add uh, boxes. Okay. Um, in the in the let me go back to the presentation because that was it, it was just to present you the the structure. So up, let's go to two. So the you you will just play basically with uh, a config file with the exercise on boxes and. What you will do with the uh, grid densities with spheres is that you will create a new uh, way to um, create grid density. Instead of having uh, parallelepiped shapes, they will have circular, uh, spherical shapes. Actually, the the grid levels. Okay. And then there is a third one where you actually use grid refinement, which is the exter external floor around a sphere. Uh, sphere. Yes. Um, so a general comment, the places I expect you to write code, it can be in config files or in .cpp files, are always commented uh, with the keyword exercise. Okay, so look for the places with the keyword exercise and you will find where you should add code. Okay, so um, the first exercise is about uh, to add more boxes to see where you should, uh, uh, how, you can uh, play with a config file to add, say, I don't know, a level three uh, grid here, for example, or uh, a level four grid uh, here, uh, around here. Okay, so that's the, the, the first example and to see a bit how you should visualize it. Okay. Then uh, you have the second exercise where the, the idea is to uh, generate these uh, spherical shape grid densities. Okay, here uh, you should look uh, into the CPP file. So here it's just about modifying the config file. Okay, it's, uh, it's this config file here that should be in the directory uh, generate grid density from boxes. Here it's in, in the directory uh, generate grid density from spheres. You will uh, go into the .cpp file, this file here, and uh, you will modify the processing functional that uh, you, you can inspire yourself from, from the generate grid density from boxes to, uh, to actually generate grid densities from spheres. Okay, 
usually in all these exercises you have an example uh, uh, of how to do things in another file that's how you develop uh, a palabos code from existing one you copy paste things from everywhere basically. and here you again you look for exercise the, the exercise keyword in comments and you will see where uh, you have to add uh, your code and then there is a complex uh, the com more complex exercise where you actually play with a uh, with a full uh, fully uh, grid refinement example okay so the idea here will be to add uh, the Reynolds stress computation on an exterior flow okay so here is a quick reminder of what is uh, the Reynolds stress okay basically it's the average of the fluctuating part of the the uh, so the the average of the stress of the uh, velocity squared fluctuating tensor okay i cannot make one sentence of it but the idea is that you have to do the following things first you have this is already given in the code you have to compute the average velocity over time okay so this is already done in the code then you want to compute the uh, uh, fluctuating velocity by uh, subtracting the velocity uh, from the um, average velocity so the instantaneous velocity to the average velocity compute the, the tensor uh, of the with the fluctuating velocities and then average this quantity over time to get the Reynolds stress okay for this um, uh, operations you will need uh, the integrate processing functional uh, function okay uh, maybe a, a remark here uh, there are two different kind of exercises in this one okay the first one is uh, related to the stress tensor so you will look for exercise and Reynolds capital everything and there is a second one if you manage to uh, arrive here is uh, an exercise about probes okay so i, I don't really uh, expect that you uh, all reach this point but uh, so you have an example in your uh, future uh, future life on how to add probes okay what is a probe a probe is a uh, particular places in your simulation when you want to measure something okay so this performs a reduction operation okay you give uh, particular points uh, in physical units in your domain you say okay i want to have the velocity pressure vorticity whatever on these specific points and i want them to be given back to me at some point okay so this is the second exercise that you will be asked to perform uh, on this exterior flow problem okay and the places you should modify the code are noted with exercise probes okay so i think that's pretty much everything for me do you have any questions in the beginning you showed us several like scalings between pressure yes. velocity and strain rate yeah but there are plenty of plenty of others macro scale variables you could calculate so are they going to would we expect some weird behavior on some of them uh so what you uh, do with this uh, quantity so say vorticity for example i don't know uh which i did not explicitly mention is that you should perform the same scalings uh when you are uh, trying to um, compute these uh, quantities when you want to uh, uh, process these quantities okay in palabos everything that you are actually simulating is in uh, lattice units when you want to uh, get a quantity uh, in physical units you have to rescale it appropriately okay so when you compute the velocity you have the velocity in, in uh, lattice units when you go to uh, physical velocity you have to rescale it with the proper quantity and it's the same for any quantity that you can compute in Palabos, which is not populations or whatever. But it should all work if you just do it properly. Exactly. No weird. Exactly. I don't expect any uh, any problem. If the rescaling is done properly, it should work. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome.
Any other uh, question? Is it, yeah. Is it possible to automatically generate the uh, coarse grain from a fine grain? Uh, yes, th there are uh, functions that help you do that. Uh, if, uh, if you look in the uh, the uh, exercise, we are you will uh, look at today. The, you will see that th there is, I think, if I remember correctly, there is a place where it's done. So you ha you can just um, uh, coarse grain a fine simulation. There are functions to do that in Palavas, yes. Okay, thank you. I have a question about the interpolation scheme. Yeah. Um, why don't you use a more local interpolation scheme where the, you don't have to treat the edges and the corners? Uh, so you mean uh, like a, a nearest neighbor interpolation or a 1D uh, in one direction? Well, one of the problems is that, it, is that it's, uh, it adds too much discontinuity. So that's what I discussed. Uh, where is it? Here, okay. So here you see the difference between a linear interpolation and a cubic interpolation. So the dashed line is linear interpolation. In a very simple case, okay, we are we have two grid levels, and we go from so and it's a Poisson flow. Okay, so basically what you see here uh, is that if you use linear interpolation, you have this uh, strong discontinuity, as it, whereas when you use cubic interpolation, you don't see anything. It's just uh, continuous line, okay. And this ha uh, has implication in terms of stability and of accuracy when you go to high Reynolds numbers. Basically, what mm. you what you will start seeing at high Reynolds numbers is that you will have checkerboard patterns that will propagate from gr a grid level to the other. Does that make I sense? I just wanted to I just wanted to say that I just stopped recording now but i will remove the whole question session after you uh, talk about this before i put the video online so the question and uh, answer session